In this lesson we want to create our master spline to control the exact movement of our tentacles. But first of all, let's clean, our, clean up our setup here. So I will collapse those ones and maybe also the master controller. And I will select all three, put them into a null object and call them um, tentacle splines. So now we know what's in here. And now I want to um, draw one spline here in the middle. So I will uh, create a cubic spline for now. Um, and just to draw the first point somewhere here where our tentacles end. And maybe just the last one here at the tip. I will select all points, hit U, S, and one more time, U, S. And now I have one, two, three, four, five points in here. And the cool thing with the cubic spline is if we now uh, take this point here and move it over there, it will give us, it will give us this nice curve, which looks, um, yeah, very, very cool. Um, and what we now want to do is I want to take these five points here. The first point should be fixed and the other four points should be linked to null objects that I don't need to go in point mode, select a point and move this one um, to deform my spline. So I will create a null object, call this one handle, one maybe, and I will copy it just four times. So this one is handle two, the next one is handle three, and the last one is handle four. And now I will change them, the display of the null objects from dot to sphere, I give them an orientation and make them a bit smaller, something like this maybe. And now I will place them to where my uh, spline points are. So if I go to spline mode again, select them all, I see one is here, one is here, one is here, and one is at the end. So I will try to bring them to, yeah, around uh, this position somewhere. So I'm gonna just distribute them over the length of the spline. Three is somewhere here, and four should be at the end, somewhere here. Okay, and what I now want to do is I want to take the points of my spline and link them to my null objects. And um, points in Cinema 4D have index numbers, so every point here has a number. You can see it if you go into your spline and click here on structure, you see that we have point numbers and every point has its position. And we need to know which point has which number. So to find out which one this one is, I can select it, go to structure, and then I see, okay, this is point four. Uh, but you can also take the move tool and double click on this point like this, and a window will pop up and it will tell you this is point four and this is the position. And so this is point four, this one here is point three, point two, and so on, point uh, one, and the first one is point zero. So let's take uh, an expresso tag for this one. Um, we have two right now because we had this issue, this priority issue with the calculation of the speed. And I would say we use this tag here, uh, this expresso tag here for this um, speed calculation thing where we had to split up our setup and we try to put all the rest in the other setup. So in here we define the movement of our jellyfish. So I will create an X group, convert to X group and name it movement, give it a color, yellow maybe. Oh, sorry, this was the wrong one. Again, I will select them all, convert to X group, then click on the X group. Then click on the X group and call this one movement. And we will give it a custom color, maybe yellow. So now we know this part here is for the movement. Make it a bit bigger, something like this. Okay, now we want to link the points of our spline to our null object. So we bring in the spline 
and we bring in our four null objects. Just place them something like this and we need to know the position of our handles and uh, we want to put them later into a null object to keep everything clean and organized so we will take coordinates and the global position that we take their global coordinate system global position and also global position and now we need a point node so here's the point node and the point node is very uh, helpful. So first of all, we need to tell the point node um, of which uh, object we are talking about. So we will create an output port on the spline object. And this one will tell our point node, hey, I want to do something with the points of this object. Now we need to tell him uh, which point we want to address or with which point we want to do something. So I will click on the point node click on parameter and here we have the point index so point zero shouldn't be touched this one will be uh, should not be connected to a null object so I will type in one and point one should be connected to handle one so I will just take the position of my handle number one create an input port for point position and we can put this one at the top of the list so it looks cleaner so now the point index, um, uh, the point node knows, okay, I should take point number one of this object here and um, put this point onto this position here. So now the first one is fixed, so we we'll just copy it, change uh, the second point node to point index two, the third to three, and the fourth to four and now we just need to connect them and uh, now they start to flash yellow because i connected something but uh, haven't connected the object yet so they don't know which object they should take so if i connect this one everything will be okay so fine we're done and now we can check it out so now i can take this uh, null object drag it over here and you see that now our spline is perfectly linked to our uh, to our null objects and now we have handles for this spline which is pretty cool and what I want to do now is I will uh, take them all uh, yeah I think I will take them all and put a, put them into one null object and call this one tentacle rig and then I have this null object we created earlier with our tentacle splines so those are the splines which deform our meshes here and I will create a new deformer, uh, a new spline wrap, put this one as a child of tentacle splines so that all of our uh, ten of these splines will be deformed. And into the spline field, I will put in my new master spline. This one, maybe we should also call it master spline. Master spline. And we set the axis to minus y. And this time, because it's rotated in the wrong way, we won't set the up vector to z. We will set it to x and just type in 1. So it looks uh, pretty normal. And we can close them both. And if we now hit play, we'll see that they move uh, very normal. And uh, if I now take one of my handles and pull it out, we can just deform our uh, moving tentacles, but they are still following their curvy motion. And this is really cool because now we have a, an automatic motion which is generated by a formula, but we can uh, define the direction and the exact movement with our handles here. And this is really, really cool. Um, you see, if I move this one out very far, um, they get stretched. Um, if you want this, it's you can leave it like this, but you can also uh, click on the spline wrap which we used for this one and set the mode from fit spline to keep length so the tentacles will always um, keep their uh, their default length so if I remove them or if I move them back and set this one to keep length and if I now take this controller here and move it out you see what happens that they slide 
over this one here. So they uh, follow the motion, but they don't get stretched. But maybe a little bit of stretching can be useful if we try to reach something and actually it's a jellyfish, so it should be like rubber. Um, I haven't tried to stretch the jellyfish yet, but I think they, they you can stretch them quite a bit. If it's blind. So now we created a master spline and a master controller for our moving tentacles. And we can move on to put some details on our jelly jellyfish in the next lesson.